All right, uh, we are on a Scout 275 Dorado. Uh, I just wanted to create a video kind of overviewing the electronics in a Scout, uh, primarily larger boats that have the Master Volt C-Zone wiring system and Garmin integration. So that's gonna be on a Scout 275 Dorado 30, 32, and 35. Uh, what you'll have to kind of start the day uh, is you'll have a key fob. Uh, there's two of these on the boat. The key fob is labeled one, two, three, and four. Uh, anything that we use on the key fob, there's going to be a redundant uh, application. So there's going to be a push button in the boat, which we'll review momentarily. Uh, so these boats are all equipped with electric battery switches. So they're turning themselves on and off through this key fob uh, or the other buttons in the console. So anytime you're getting on the boat, if you just press one for a short second, you'll hear the boat will come to life. So the three battery switches will turn themselves on. You can see everything is going through a systems check. And then all of the courtesy lights in the boat will come on. You'll see here the VHF will turn itself on and set an alarm every time and you'll just need to hit the clear button to do that. So the battery systems turn themselves on. We'll come in here and then we will hit the console light. Which will activate the light and let you see. So those are your three battery switches which turn themselves on. Now to turn them off at the end of the day, you're gonna press and hold one until they turn off. And that'll completely shut the boat system down. So again, everything's off. We'll go ahead and turn it back on, which is just a short tap. We'll hit clear. System's going through everything, checking. All right, so you'll see the uh, lights are on. And then we've got the switch here. Button two will actually activate every light. Three will activate every light in a brighter mode. And then four will turn everything off. Okay, so the boat is on, we've turned the lights on. And the reason we have that is if you're walking down the dock, you can press one to turn the button. Uh, the battery switch is on, you can press three and or two to turn all your lights on so everything's prepped and ready to go. Uh, we'll come over here again. So if you wanna go into the dash, I can hit console light. And the console light is gonna turn the light on in the console. And it can also turn it on if it's on down below in the head compartment. So we'll just take a quick look in here and kind of review what we have here. That's your battery charger. Uh, that is a wireless adapter for the stereo system. That is your Fusion Amp. This box is your GSD24 sounder, which is the sounder box that translates the information coming from the transducer to the Garmin 8212. Here you have breakers, starboard port charger, house charger, stereo amp, windlass, and electronics, as well as module, which is for the wireless uh, key fob. These are just larger breakers for things that pull a lot of power. Uh, over here, you have a couple buttons. Console light, which we've turned on. Discharge, which takes the uh, waste out of the waste container, pumps it overboard. Engines and house. So you have two buttons that turn the house and engine batteries on. So those are doing the same thing that the key fob is doing. So if you just press those, if you lose the key fob or don't have it with you, you press both of them, that'll turn the battery switches on and off. And then here you have other breakers. One is the toilet. Uh, the toilet needs to be on in order for the electric flush to turn on as well as the fresh water system. So I'm going to leave that on for now so we can show you the operation of the toilet. Two accessory switches which are currently wired to nothing. Again, those are your battery switches. And then um, you have the two yellow switches which are emergency parallel. Uh, you do not need to activate these with the wiring system. They will turn themselves on and off when needed. Uh, the VSR system is going to send the voltage from the alternator on the batteries to the batteries that needs it most. Uh, for an emergency situation, if your house and engine buttons don't work and your uh, key fob is not with you, 
You can manually turn the switches, but you'll need to push them in in order to turn them. Currently they're on green. If you rotate them counterclockwise, that would turn them off. Um, coming up to the dash on the Garmin in a C-Zone, every switch, pump, light, and everything on this boat is controlled within the Garmin. So it's just a one touch on a Garmin to turn it on. And then we'll wait on that while that's booting up. We'll just show you on any uh, XCA motor with digital throttles, it is a turn key, which will activate the motors. This will activate your gauges. And then these boats have push button start. On and off. Um, on the gauges, you have two engine gauges. So it's gonna show you your tack, your hours, and then that blinking bar on the right. You'll see it go down, that shows your engine trim. Same for the starboard motor. And then this will show fuel, miles per hour. And then on the left, it's gonna show econ, which is miles per gallon. You can do trip, total gallons burn, trip, total miles, and then flow, which is gallons per hour. Uh, anytime the Garmin turns on, you're gonna have to agree. Okay, so this is your home screen. Uh, anytime you need to go back and start from scratch, you wanna go to home. So you have basically on this boat a couple different options. You have charts, you have sonar, you have gauges because the motors are tied into the Garmin. You have the chart and sonar, which is a combination of everything. And then you have the C-Zone. The C-Zone is what's gonna allow you to control every switch on the boat. So if I peel back a little bit, you can see here there are uh, three circles, one in blue. This is every switch and every light, every pump on this boat can be controlled here. So if I just scroll through here, it gives you all of your screens. These are in alphabetical order. So you'll see anchor, lights off, lights on, mood, night cruise, fishing, anchor, light, bait well, uh, etc. You know, for example, if I just do lights on, it's going to turn all the lights on like this and the mood lights and then I can just go to lights off and it'll turn them all off um, just some other things horn uh, so everything from a switch can be controlled here uh, and again if we just need to cycle back we always just go back to home chart and sonar and granted I've, I've set this screen up already you can create custom charts so here I have a gauge chart which shows fuel flow, RPMs, motor trim. Bottom left I'll have sonar showing uh, depth, temperature, miles per hour. Uh, here we'll have the chart uh, and here we'll have the season. So you can go through everything and everything is on this screen at the same time. In order to create your own screen that you like, you would just go to the home screen and you would go to menu and then you would add a combination. Okay, so it would allow you to add whatever screen you want, currently one, so I could go to functions, you know, and choose four different things, um, for example. So we'll just go back for now. And then sonar and charts within each. So if you want to create waypoints, you just go into charts and you hit menu. Um, and then you can edit your combos, do waypoints. So we'll go back for now. And just This is your zoom in, zoom out feature. So if we just zoom in, you know, this is all push button. This is also like an iPad, so you can on an 82 series zoom in and zoom out with your fingers like that. Um, there are a few select buttons just for quicker stuff that you may or may not use while you're running that you don't wanna to have to go through the Garmin, like your wiper, your windshield wiper wash, your console lights, which we have done, your courtesy lights, your navigation lights, uh, bilge pump, and then that's the live well pump. Uh, just something to note on the courtesy lights, uh, if I hit it one time, it'll turn the top lights on. If I hit it a second time, it'll turn the bottom lights on. If I hit it a third time, it'll turn all the lights on, and it's not till the fourth time that it turns itself off. Um, you always have the battery voltage listed right here, so that's a good thing to keep an eye on. And then you have windless control up or down here. And then you're also gonna have windless control uh, at the dash or at the bow there.
the stereo is pretty self-explanatory. All you gotta do is tap it one time, wait about three or four seconds, and it'll turn itself on. Uh, this is for the, well, I just scroll through AM, FM. Uh, this is gonna be a plug, which is a USB plug, uh, which is located in this glove box right there. And then the last one is the iPod or iPhone, which you would just pop in there. All right, so going back to um, switches, let me go back here and turn the console light on. So on this switch, we can control switches here. We can control switches through the Garmin. And then for a redundancy standpoint, within the C-Zone, every light pump is labeled within this fuse box. So here we can see Baitwell Recirc, Raw Water, Port Fish Box, Bilge Light. Uh, so for example, if I just pull this piece and pop it right off. So everything is labeled, okay? So for example, Bilge Light is this purple fuse. If I just move this fuse up one notch, it's gonna turn the Bilge Light on. Okay, so it is, a, it is a way to hot wire in case any switching has not worked. So we have fuse panels marked for everything in the boat right here. So while I have that fuse and bilge light on, I'm gonna come into the bilge pump just to identify a few different features here. <clears throat> These two pumps on either side that are black with the blue rings are the diaphragm overboard discharge pumps for the two fish boxes. Uh, port and starboard. We have your two primer bulbs right above those. We have your two Yamaha fuel filters right underneath the hatch. We're going to have the bilge pump. Uh, you can manually turn the bilge pump on. It does have a float switch. Um, that is your through hole transducer. That is a B60 Airmar. These are just uh, distribution boxes uh, to carry the voltage a little further. Uh, that middle, you have three brass through holes with shutoff valves. The two closest to us are the overboard drains, so any water that gets on the deck, it's going to overboard discharge through those. The one in the middle is connected to the two diaphragm overboard discharge pumps, so when you turn the pumps and pumps the fish boxes, that's going through that middle compartment, or that middle through hole. Um, that black pump in the back, right behind that, is the autopilot uh, pump. That's the autopilot box. That black pump back there is the raw water pump for raw water washdown. The black pump, which is somewhat difficult to see back there, is your power steering pump. This is your live well pump, so that's going to take water and put it in your live well. This does have a through hole shutoff valve as well. Uh, keep in mind your raw water wash pickup comes through that through hole as well. And then this pump that's sideways in the back is your recirculating uh, pump, so that's going to take water out of the live well, aerate it, and put it back in. So anytime you have an emergency type situation where you're taking on water, the first thing you're going to want to do is come and check these through holes. Definitely close the one in the middle. Uh, close the one to the side where the live well is. Uh, you might want to leave these open for now unless they're leaking because those are where the water drains overboard. There are two other through hole valves in this middle compartment. So we'll see again open this middle compartment. These are where your four batteries are. These are labeled. So the two engine batteries are the aftmost batteries and the two forward batteries are the house batteries. Uh, your forward bilge pump is underneath this container right here. So that's what that black tube is. That's your through hole for your uh, head. So when you hit the discharge pump, which is inside of the console, labeled discharge pump, it is gonna use the diaphragm pump right here and it's gonna pump it overboard. So that's taking waste from the head holding tank and putting it overboard. So that is currently open, inline is open. Uh, this little shutoff valve here is actually just helps retain the self bailing capacities. So when water comes in here, it's gonna drain through these two little scuppers and drain overboard there. So again, four through hole shutoff valves in the back, two through hole shutoff valves here. If you look down here, this is your freshwater junction point. So you, whenever you turn the freshwater pump on, uh, the blue hose coming from the left is coming from the tank, and then it meets four different uh, points. These are currently open. You can see the small dials above the blue labels. 
that allow you to open and close those. Probably no reason to close those unless 